So it is the last week of July and it is super hot. So today what we were doing is we got up a little bit early to do our CSA harvest and that entails basically picking about 20 or so different crops and then we'll head into our wash station to my right and we'll do our washing, our packing and then we'll pack all of our orders. So we harvest for a couple of different uh, CSA options. Today we're heading to Halifax after we're done with the day, so it's about an hour and a half away from the farm. We do a delivery there once a week every Tuesday. We have two different types of vegetable CSAs. We have a basket style CSA and a market style CSA. So we harvest for both of those. A community supported agriculture program means that people sign up for the program early in the winter when we're still getting our feet under us for the season before we've made some of our major purchases, before we've bought seeds, etc. And so by having people sign up early, make a deposit, that gives us some money in the bank to start making investments into the season. And something that comes along with that, of course, is especially given how small our farm is, is that you kind of ride the highs and the lows with the farm. You kind of take that risk when you sign up for a CSA that you're going to receive whatever the farmers can grow. There's really been a lot of solidarity and support from the community that has helped us keep growing both financially through their support in our CSA program, but also moral support when things get really tough and challenging. It's been really, really nice to have the backing of a community to help us move through these challenges. So here on Springtide Farm, we do engage in a lot of ecological farm practices. As of this coming fall, we will be certified organic. So that's sort of one regimen that we subscribe to. And that kind of gives us an, a broad overview of what we can and cannot do, especially with regard to inputs. We don't use any synthetic fertilizers to amend our beds. The amendments that we apply are organic alfalfa pellets and a little bit of potassium sulfate because that's what's low in our soil based on our soil testing. And then another thing we do, instead of using any pesticides or sprays to get rid of said cabbage loopers, for example, we put row cover on as soon as we plant the crops and that helps to keep the pests from entering and laying eggs on the plants. So we're about to do probably our least favorite task on the farm, which is hauling around these giant silage tarps. But we do that because it's kind of a passive way to kill back whatever crop we're trying to kill and prepare the section for new crops. One, two, three, three. We do this instead of tilling or other methods that would maybe, you know, churn up the soil quite a bit. And this way, we're actually just letting it be. Just this last weekend, we had a massive rain event here in Nova Scotia. Thunderstorms that lasted about 12 hours. We got upwards of eight inches of rain. And frankly, I was just up all night that night thinking not only about how the crops were faring, but also, oh, okay, well, what's gonna happen in September when hurricane season rolls around? Are they gonna be way worse this year? Things are only going to get more stressful on the farm because we're so connected with the earth and with the natural systems that anytime there's an extreme weather event, it's so noticeable. Here, you really notice the changes in the trees, in the endemic species that are here, in the time of year that things bloom, in the frost cycles. There's just so many indicators that things are changing quickly that it's hard not to be anxious about it. I think a lot of farmers are already trying to adapt and even mitigate to the crisis. Um, how to manage your, your mind spinning about it is a whole other matter. So this is our sixth season working together and our fourth season kind of running a business together. 
It's been fun. It's been challenging. <laughs> yeah, I think we're making it work and I think it's going pretty well. <laughs> I think what helps is that we both have a shared vision of what we want to see here on the farm, which is not just the two of us like breaking our backs and kind of hidden behind this fence line of our farm, but we want to make it more of a community operation. So I'm feeling that as we expand the farm and bring more people on board in any capacity, then that'll help our relationship too, because it means we won't be in each other's hair as much, but we have fun, we still laugh. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing right now. <laughs> I don't see the future of agriculture as being sustainable if it maintains this steady road down the industrial model. But I do see hope in other small farms and communities that are really engaging with this agroecological model that is all about good ecological practices and also good healthy relationships. We're in this together. We're not just growing food for ourselves and for the purpose of moving it from A to B. We're actually trying to feed these people that we're building relationships with. I think that there's so much potential here and we're in our earliest days, but yeah, I. I don't really know how to put it, but it, it feels exciting and it feels like we're on the brim of something really good.